Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, we're gonna go through the precise definition of a limit. I'm gonna show you what the definition is and we're gonna do a simple example of how to use the definition. Um, so let's start with the definition. The definition says that when you take the limit, as n approaches infinity of a sequence, which we'll call a sub n, and if that's equal to L, this means, this means that for every epsilon greater than zero, so let's not hold back, let's use the, the pro notation to do this. So for all epsilon greater than zero, so that means for all, so for all epsilon greater than zero, uh, there is, there is, we can find a positive integer. So there exists, that means there exists, a capital N. Now, typically we say this is a natural number, but I, I like to say positive integer because some people allow zero to be uh, a natural number, which I, I don't, I, it's a matter of opinion, but I don't like it. <laughs> so there exists a natural uh, positive integer N such that for all little n bigger than capital N, we can make the distance between a sub n and its limit L arbitrarily small. So the distance function is the absolute value. So the absolute value of a sub n minus L is less than epsilon. So let's go over that again. So we say that this limit, a sub n, the limit of a sub n is equal to L means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer n, such that for all little n greater than capital N, the distance between a sub n and L can be made uh, small. It's, it's true for all epsilon, no matter how small, so we can make it as small as we like. That's why you have the for all in the definition, right? Because you can make it super, super small, and you can still make the distance, you know, really, you can make the distance really, really small. So you can make it as close as you want it to be. Um, let's do a simple proof. Let's prove, let's prove, I don't know, the limit. Uh, as n approaches, and if you're just gonna make it up, let's do, uh, I don't know, how about one over n to the fourth? I'm just making one up. Let's prove that that is equal to zero. Let's do it, let's do it. So before we do the proof, you have to figure it out, right? So in the proof, we have to start with epsilon greater than zero. We have to find n. So typically, the, that's the hard part. So first, let's, let's find n, so scratch. So to find n, this is not the proof. We're just gonna use the definition and kind of work backwards. So we have an epsilon greater than zero, and we need, we need a capital N such that we can make the distance between a sub n and zero small, right? We want to make that distance small. So we need one over n to the fourth minus zero to be less than epsilon. Right? This is what we need in our proof, right? This is what we need. So now what you can do is you can solve this for n. So we have one over n to the fourth. You can drop the absolute value, right? Because it doesn't matter, right? Because n is, a, is an integer, so you don't care about the absolute value. And then to solve this for n, we can multiply by n to the fourth. So you have one less than epsilon times n to the fourth, divide by epsilon. Oh, I'm kind of fast, I think my battery on my camera is dying, so I think it might have died, I don't know, I'll just keep going. And then you take the fourth root of both sides. So when you do that, you get n greater than the fourth root of one over epsilon, right? So I read that backwards, let me, let me write it, n greater than the fourth root of one over epsilon. So we need, a, we need a natural number that's bigger than that. So there's something called the Archimedean property that allows us to choose a, a natural number bigger than that. So given any real number, we can always find a natural number that's larger. It's called the, the Archimedean property. So we'll use that to choose our n. So we'll choose an integer n bigger than that in our proof. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's do the proof now. I'm gonna erase this. So proof. So we'll let epsilon be greater than zero. And we'll choose a positive integer, so choose n, which is a positive integer or a natural number, greater than the fourth root of one over epsilon. Right. So for all epsilon greater than zero, we started with that, with our epsilon. We have shown the existence of an n via the Archimedean property. Then for all little n bigger than capital N, we're gonna look at the distance between one over n to the fourth and zero, just like we did, except we're gonna show a little bit more work this time. So this is the absolute value of 1 over n to the 4th minus 0, which is equal to 1 over n to the 4th. Now let's carefully justify why this is less than epsilon. So since our little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than the 4th root of 1 over epsilon, right? We know that's true, right? And big N is bigger than the 4th root of 1 over epsilon. Let's, let's work this out and solve for 1 over n to the 4th. So I'm going to write this as follows. So this means that... Um, n is bigger than the fourth root of one over epsilon, right, writing it again. And then what we can do um, is we can write this as the fourth root of one is one. 
the fourth root of epsilon is just the fourth root of epsilon. Now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna multiply by this and divide by n, okay? So we're gonna multiply by this and divide by n. So when we do that, we get the fourth root of epsilon greater than one over n. Now you raise both sides to the fourth power, so you get epsilon greater than one over n to the fourth. So that means one over n to the fourth is less than epsilon. So one over n to the fourth is less than epsilon. So to recap, we go back to our, our so thus, let me write this again as a formality for clarity. One over n to the fourth minus zero is one over n to the fourth. And we just showed here that's less than epsilon, and that completes the proof. So that's it.